Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. It's good to be with you on this Lord's Day. Today's sermon is going to be on the church family. Be sure to stay with us after the sermon. We're going to have a song, and then we'll come together to take the communion of the Lord together. This world is not my home, I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. They're all expecting me, and that's one thing I know. My Savior pardoned me, and now I onward go. I know he'll take me through, though I am weak and poor, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Just over in glory land we'll live eternally. The saints on every hand are shouting victory. Their songs of sweetest praise drift back from heaven's shore. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Today's sermon is the church family. In the book of 1 Timothy, chapter 3, and verse number 15, the Bible calls the church the house of God the church of the living God, the pillar and the ground of truth. There's no greater place to be than the church of Christ. And today, the Lord's day, is the best day the Lord has ever given us. You know, the Bible teaches us that out of many people are made one family. That's why the Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 17 that the Lord made out of one blood, every nation of people. And in the book of Galatians chapter 3, he says that there is neither Jew nor Greek, bond nor free, male nor female, barbarian or Scythian. We're all one in Christ Jesus. And in this great family, there's a unity, a oneness, a togetherness. We're family. And so there's a great joy and happiness that comes from being in the family. I've never been happier in my life but than when I was in the Lord's church. And the greatest people I've ever met are Christians, people in the Lord's church. And the greatest happiness and joy I've ever had was being in the church. And quite often I have felt like old blue laying on the front porch, chewing on a catfish head, just as happy as can be. You know, the dictionary defines family as a group of people related to one another by blood or marriage. And if you think about it carefully, all of us in the church are related together by blood, by the blood of Jesus Christ. And all of us in the church are related to one another through marriage because the church is the bride of Christ. We're related no matter where we came from, no matter what color our skin, no matter what our economic status, no matter our education, we're all related one to another. It's a family, brothers and sisters. 
I want you to consider also that God puts you in this family. You are right where God wants you to be. The Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 2 that the Lord added to the church those who were being saved. You're in the church and you were put there by God and God wants you there and he put you right where he wanted you to be. You're in the greatest family in the world. And so I want you to think about some truths about the family. Number one, family defends family. I want you to remember in the Old Testament, Abraham and his nephew, Lot. Abraham left his land across the Euphrates River, and they came to the promised land or Canaan land in those days, and he brought Lot, his nephew, with him. And after a while, the shepherds of Lot began arguing with the shepherds that were employed by Abraham over the fields and the watering holes. And when the argument came before Abraham, he met with Lot, and he said to Lot, You choose where you want to go. And he said to Lot, There was no room for disagreements or falling out between the two of them. As the King James Version says, We be brethren. And he told Lot to choose where he wanted to go. And Lot chose. Lot chose the best place, the best land. And Abraham let him have it because they were family. So when Lot chose the best land, off he went. And the Bible says he pitched his tent towards Sodom. And there eventually he moved, living in those evil cities. And there arose a war, and Lot and his entire family ended up being snatched away as prisoners of war. And when Abraham got news of it, even though there had been a disagreement among them, and even though the boy had chosen the best land to take his flocks to, Abraham assembled all of the mighty men of his clan, and they went to war and rescued Lot and all of his, and restored them back to their place. Because Abraham saw Lot as his family, and no matter what, Abraham was going to defend Lot. You see, family sticks up for you. Family goes to bat for you. Family stands by you. Family defends you. Family stands up for you. And that's what the church is. It's a family, the greatest place. And you'll always be defended by your brothers and sisters in Christ who love you. Now, some people slip up in the church and they slip up on this issue. That's for sure. But that's because they got carnality in their hearts. And don't worry about that. They just need a little bit more Jesus. And because someone's carnal doesn't mean you need to be carnal. You just keep Jesus in your heart. And one day they'll come around. In a family, you're defended against rumors. In a family, they'll stand up for you when you're down. And that's what's so great about being in the church. Even when you're down, you won't be there for long because you've got a family. Let me give you another truth about family. Family sacrifices for family. In the Bible, it says that they had all things common during rough times. Right now, we're in a little bit of rough times. But I can assure you, in the Lord's church, you won't go without. Because if one of your brothers or sisters has what you need, they'll share it with you. And we'll have all things common. In the church, in your family, your brothers and sisters will go the second mile for you. They'll lay aside me my and mine. That's what family does. My ideas, my way will be laid aside by your brothers and sisters in Christ for peace and harmony and togetherness. Because it's a family. And the family will make sacrifices for the best and for the better of the family. 
And that's why we share our food. That's why we share our money. That's why we share our time. That's why we make sacrifices in the church, because we're doing it for family. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 6, verse number 10, As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto they of the household of faith. Another truth about the family is that family provides for family. The Bible says, Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. The Bible also says, don't become weary in well-doing. Let me encourage you in the family of God to continue doing good no matter what. Never stop. Never get weary in well-doing. The Lord sees what you do, and the Lord will bless you for it. The Bible says that pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to take care of the fatherless and the widows in their affliction and to keep yourself unspotted from the world. The Bible also says that a man who won't care for his own is worse than an infidel, and that includes caring for his brothers and sisters in Christ. That's why it's so good to be in the family of God, because you're never treated badly by God's people who love Jesus. In the church which is a family, we'll never let family go without their needs. I once met a man who wasn't in the church. He was so poor, he had a tumbleweed as his friend. But when he became a member of the Lord's church, he had every one of his needs provided for, and God richly blessed him. He was in the family. He was in the church. That's why the Bible says, if you see a brother or a sister, naked or destitute of food, we take care of them. Just recently, we were able to uh, find out that someone in the church had a need and turned out to be for some food. So we gathered up some bags of food and brought them over to them. And it was a big surprise to them. And it's exactly what they needed, exactly what the Lord had wanted us to do. And when we came in through the door and delivered the food, they were grinning like a possum, eating a sweet potato. They knew just how great it was to be in the Lord's church in the family. Another truth about the family is that family tolerates family. In the book of Romans chapter 12, verse number 10, the Bible says, Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love in honor preferring one another. If you think about the word toleration, the dictionary defines it as accept or endure something or someone unpleasant or disliked with forbearance. Another definition says, allow the existence, occurrence, or practice of something that one does not necessarily like or agree with without interference. In the church, it's a place where we love, where we endure, where we weep with those who weep, where we care, where we help, where we stay with you, where you're tolerated. And in the family, you must have toleration. Family stays together. And the greatest family of all is the Church of Christ. The Lord's our rock in Him we cry, a shelter in the time of storm. Secure whatever will be tied, a shelter in the time of storm. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a weary land, a weary land. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a weary land, a weary land. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a weary land, a weary land. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a weary land, a weary land. Oh, Jes
This part of our service together will be taking the communion. So I hope that you have your bread and your fruit of the vine and that you're ready. First, we'll partake of the bread. The bread is a symbol of the body of Jesus Christ given freely on the cross of Calvary. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this bread, which is a symbol of your body, freely given as a sacrifice. Lord, we pray that we can partake in the benefits of your body, namely the forgiveness of sins. In Jesus' name, amen. And as we partake of this bread, let us meditate on everything that Jesus did for us as he died on Calvary's tree and was resurrected the third day and ascended into heaven. And now we will partake of the fruit of the vine, which is a symbol of the blood of Jesus Christ freely given on the cross of Calvary. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this symbol, this figure of your blood that you have provided richly to us. We thank you, Lord, for the blood of Jesus Christ that was poured out freely and willingly for our sin. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to partake in the benefits of that blood, forgiveness of sins, and the promise of heaven. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And as we partake of the fruit of the vine, let us meditate on all that Jesus did for us. Thank you so much for being with me today on this Lord's Day. Let us pray together. Lord, be with us during these trying times. We pray, Lord, that no member of the Church of Christ will be stricken with coronavirus. We pray, Lord, that nobody that we know will be stricken with this evil virus. We pray, Lord, that not one more single person on the surface of the earth will be stricken with this disease. We pray, Lord, for you to intervene. We know that you can. We pray, Lord, that your will will be done. Be with us, Lord. Help us to stay strong. Help us to keep our faith in you. Forgive us of our sins. We thank you for all of your blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We'll see you next week. God bless you. Amen. Sing them over again to me, wonderful words of love. Let me more of their beauty see, wonderful words of life. Words of life and beauty, teach me faith and duty. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Christ the Blessed One gives to all wonderful words of life. Sinnerless to the loving call, wonderful words of life. All so freely given, wooing us to Jesus only said